Hello everybody, this is Conquering History Games, and welcome back to part two of my American Union State, in which things are actually going to kick off now. So, let's, uh, I was going to say let's slow things down, but one of the good things about pausing, things getting paused automatically, is that we don't have to slow down. So, just taking a quick look here at our generals, of course we have Patton, who is our panzer leader, he's a trickster, he's an armor officer, and, uh, you know, he's got, we've got quite a few armor people we're, we're going to be able to put under him. It just kind of seems self-evident, doesn't it, that we've got to we got to go the tank way? Because look at this: we got how many Panzer leaders do we have? We've got one, two, three, four. Like, yeah, it's just that's it's self-evident. So I'm gonna see if I can build a really, really tank-heavy army. I'm not talking about one of those armies where you've got, like, you know. One of the ratios I usually do is if I have a if I have five armies under a field marshal, four of them will be infantry, and maybe I'll have one that's tanks. No, 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 no. I'm talking about going seriously heavy on the tanks, uh, lots and lots of them of different types. We might do light, we might do mediums, we might do heavies, we might do all of them. I don't know. But for right now, let's pick up mobile warfare, focus on speed and maneuverability to cut off and disorganize enemy forces. Plus that little bit of speed and the extra organ the less organization loss when moving will actually have some good applications during the Civil War. So, let's get to it. We should be seeing some pop-ups here pretty quick. Let's make sure that everybody is uh, strategically deploying. And now everybody has declared war on each other. So let's just pause for a second here. And uh, so Second American Civil War has broken out, but there's not going to be a PSA breakout. So the United States of America is going to be much stronger here than it usually is. Uh, just as a heads up for those of you who didn't know. Now we need this group to be very very aggressive extremely aggressive because we have to um get a cutoff here look at that i'm seeing there's we've got we've got 17 divisions right here that's a significant chunk of um of american forces so we need to keep them pinned down if we can so the Second American Civil War, to those not in the know, it might have seemed like the crisis in the United States came out of nowhere, but experts agree that this was a civil war years in the making. Since the collapse of the New York Stock Exchange in 1925, the economy of the United States has been sluggish and mired in deep recession. Now the United States has collapsed into an all-out civil war between the supporters of the federal government, the combined syndicates of America, and the right-wing American Union state. Volunteers are pouring in from around the world to support one faction or another, with some characterizing the bitter ideological conflict as simply part of a wider global clash of ideas. The destiny of America is at stake. So, we're going to, uh, you know, obviously we're going to have to be very, very fast, so let's try to let's try to take as much as we can, as quickly as we can, before uh, anybody gets too settled in. Liberia, am I reading that right? Liberia got called in? <laughs> Okay, uh, so we've got the light tanks queued up, and what I think I'm going to try to do, where's my infantry divisions? Okay, these guys do have support artillery. That's good. Uh, we've got some other infantry divisions down here, so what I'm thinking we're going to do is, how are we on artillery? We've got absolutely none. Okay, that's, a, that's fine. That's fine because I want to prioritize the tanks, uh, which is going to cost me a little bit of steel. But nobody wants to trade with me. Is this some sort of glitch? Maybe it's gonna take a couple days or something. But uh, yeah, everybody go. Oh yeah, so it's time to pick our chiefs of staff and whatnot. First off, militia rise up throughout the country. A number of men and women have risen against the corrupt government in Washington when they heard Huey Long speak about their tyrannical actions. So we're getting some Civil War reinforcements. How many? We got five. And I think these are the ones that yeah they just get scattered all over the place. So if I do, if I do this. Just give them to you know, Collins or something there that should drop them wherever they are. Uh, so with the Civil War raging all around us and the fact that we do not have a chief of Navy has prompted uh, concern among various political and military leaders. Thus, they met with Huey Long to appoint a chief of Navy to win this war. So we have Arthur Lee Willard, who would give us more screen attack. George Lincoln Rockwell, who's uh, less trade convoy cost. Uh, amph amphibious invasion speed is lowered. Special forces capacity multiplier. Cool. William Frederick Hal Halsey Jr. 
You know what? I just have a good feeling about this George Lincoln Rockwell guy. He just seems like a really upstanding individual. The type of dude you just know has no controversy surrounding him. So we're going to go with George Lincoln Rockwell here. Chief of Staff, with the war raging all around us and the fact that we do not have a Chief of Staff, has prompted concern among various political and military leaders. Thus, they met with Huey Long to appoint a Chief of Staff to win this war. Hmm, who am I gonna go with here? So let's take a let's take a look at our options. We've got Arthur Horn uh Hornbury Hornbury Bell, uh, who will give us more organization and recovery rate. George Van Horn Mosley, who I think is it's the same one, right? Let me just double check. Should be. Yeah, right here. Our other field marshal. Well, one of our other ones. We've also got Chenault, who I think is new. I don't think he used to be in here. It's been a while since I played the American Union State, but that's cool that he isn't here if he wasn't before. Uh, and then James Guthrie Harbord, who gives us land for itself. Oh, yeah, Mosley's the lowered cost on artillery and things like that. But again, you know, Arthur Horn Bowie Bell, his school of psychology, he... I've just got a, a really excellent feeling about him. And plus, the organization recovery rate is uh, going to be very good for the war, obviously. So, okay, we're no longer at war with Liberia now. We're seeing some red bubbles here, but that's fine. That's fine. I don't mind the red bubbles. As long as we can cut off these 17 divisions. This is so imperative. I cannot stress this enough. We need to get this cut off. At least I believe so. Um, if we're going to have a successful game here. You see, like, what, what is your all's problem? Why aren't you all moving? We're at war, haven't you heard? Get going. Now, we've got a lot of divisions all over the place here, so let's see if we can come down here into Denver in the meantime. And I want to try to take St. Louis. That would just be amazing if we could do that. And it looks like Canada is not taking, um, is not taking the uh, New England again, which is really weird because they were doing that in some of my other games too. I don't, I don't know why they're just seeming much less aggressive than they usually are. Let's get up here to Denver. All right, anybody not moving? Y'all got to keep moving. You got to keep moving. We got to get to St. Louis if at all practical. St. Louis is such a damn good city to have. Whoa, 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 whoa. Chief of the Army with the Civil War raging all around us and the fact that we do not have a Chief of Army has prompted concern among various political and military leaders. Thus, they met with Huey Long to appoint a Chief of Army to win this war. So we've got Edwin A. Emerson Jr., who is... Okay, wait. Edward A. Emerson, who's the Divis Division Defense, plus 10%, Supply Consumption, minus 10%. We've got here um, Frank Maxwell Andrews, who will give us additional supply grace, uh, less out of supply penalty, uh, land night attack is increased, and reconnaissance is increased as well. Hmm. And then George Smith Patton Jr., who, of course, gives us tons of bonuses to our armored stuff, but... You know, even though I've talked about how I'm going to really go armored, there's, again, just something about this Edwin A. Emerson Jr. I just feel really good about all these people. Uh, they just seem like fine, upstanding individuals in an, in, in an intangible way. You, you know, it's just one of those things you can't, you can't place your finger on it, right? You just know. You just know that they're good people. Uh, get some of you over here now. See, this was key. We were able to cross the straits. It's always very good. Okay, so we got a huge, huge front that we're uh, we're looking at here. Let's try to intercept this guy. And keep moving north. Who who's not moving? Anybody not moving? Also, I should kind of try to take a peek at what I'm dealing with here. So it doesn't look like we were able to get the cutoff down here in Texas, or maybe we still can. Uh, let's do a, we can't do the force attack, we don't have the command power for it, but... Um, chief of Air Force with the Civil War raging all around us, and the fact that we do not have a Chief of the Air Force has prompted concern amongst uh, various political and military uh, leaders. Thus, they met with Huey Long to appoint a, uh, a Chief of Air Force to win this war. So we've got Charles Lindbergh 
who is going to give us air superiority stuff. Charles LeMay, Cur pardon me, Curtis LeMay, which will give us more naval aviation doctrine. Uh, naval bombing, more naval targeting, more naval agility, and minus 10% uh, bad weather, weather penalty, which is a really specific thing. I'm, I'm trying to actually think if I've seen something like that before. I'm pretty sure I have. And then John Gearhart uh, Cromlian Jr., who night operations penalty is minus 5%. Or 10% bomber strategy, bomber attack, bomber agility, all plus five, uh, 2%, and then strategic bombing plus 5%. Hmm, I think we are going to go with. Hmm, naval aviation doctrine minus 10% on the bad weather penalty. Interesting, interesting stuff. I think we are going to go with Curtis LeMay. Again, just uh, just just have really good feeling about this guy. He's not just a military leader. He really seems like he associates with people who have the right ideas for the for the future of of the country. Now, uh, let's see here. We've got armored divisions. What's it going to take? We're going to need 175 light tanks. We're going to need some motorized as well to build one of these. So let's get started on that. Something like this. I just want to see if I can get a single tank division out before the end of the war. Come on, come on now. Get around, loop around, fellas, loop around. Got our infantry division coming in. He's got decent enough soft attack. There goes Moscow. The Russian Civil War is almost over. I think ours is going to take a little bit longer than theirs did. I just kind of got the feeling. All right, let's go down and take care of that, that one division there. And I think we are going to be able to make it into Washington, D.C. just by the hairs of our chinny chin chins. Um really cutting well into some of these areas it's almost down to Denver here cool so we're about to get the link up and then we can start reassigning some of these uh, of course we're already really running out of steam on uh, these offenses yeah, so you stop there and uh, yeah we're gonna I think we're just gonna now stop everybody here Okay, but we're on the right side, the correct side of Chesapeake Bay, if you ask me. Uh, okay, now we're going to try to inch our way towards Chicago. Alabamians, you need to go north, you need to go into Nebraska. Still holding these two in place. Trying to stop them. Nice, there we go. We got him. We got the encirclement. We took El Paso. Excellent. Now let's get you going down to Phoenix. This guy's gonna get down here to the port and evacuate. And you know what? It's okay. Actually, it's not super okay. Try to try to get down here, please. And and move quickly about it. All right. Meanwhile, how many of these divisions can we knock out? At least ten. 16, something like this. Okay, good. So we're going to need lots of militia to fill in these gaps in the lines. Now, we've almost, we do have Washington, D.C. to surround it. Unfortunately, the United States still has access to California, so they do still have supply coming in. Oh, wait, no. Come. Okay, you, you need a counterattack right here. And you, yeah, disrupt these divisions. We've got to let the attrition take its toll on them. Keep them at bay for now. We're getting pushed back a tiny bit. Right here. Let's get some of you down or over here. Yep. Okay. We kind of have them held here. Uh, having a little bit of trouble dealing with the motorized. Nope, we've got them. All right, what else? We need rubber. I could arrange that. And I want to be kind of careful that I'm not overextending myself too much here. There goes Washington. Syndicate militias have advanced towards and captured the symbolic capital of the United States, Washington, D.C. They stormed the Capitol building and met strong resistance, but eventually they broke through and the flag of the Combined Syndicates of America now flies over the U.S. Capitol. Rumors are that the Syndicate militias have been rounding 
up all political representatives they can find in the city to give them trial, although unconfirmed sources claim that the most important government figures have been evacuated during the battle, with their current whereabouts currently unknown. Syndicalist traders made it to Washington, D.C. Okay, so we got, once again, we got, we got plenty of people here. Uh, we're reassigning some of them. And where's my Louisiana volunteers? They're out here for some reason. Uh, okay, now we're going to disband that. Okay, cool. So we are, you know, we're getting, we're getting everybody, getting everybody reasonably distributed. Let's force these ones out early and start assigning them to some of these areas. Um, okay, so we need a couple of you to join him. Then you guys... We need five of you to come over here. Again, we're just filling in those gaps. And five more of you. I'm just gonna have you know, wherever I feel is necessary. So I'm not sure who I want to push against harder right now. The combined syndicates has more divisions. So is that the argument to attack them or the argument to not attack them, right? <laughs> Uh, but what I think I'm going to, I think actually we are going to prioritize heading west, taking out some of these areas here, picking up these Californian factories. And um, then we, because the United States will have capitulated, we're not going to be suffering from occupation issues. Of course, if we're lucky, though, we might be able to sneak our way over to Chicago. I don't think so, though. We'll try. I'm going to definitely try. Uh and we gotta get, we gotta close up, we gotta close this up. They're really making it hard for me. All right, keep moving. See, my lines are really, really stretched out because I got half of, I got, let's see. Yeah, I've got 12 divisions in this army just dealing with the this encirclement. So it is a problem. What I think we also need to do is actually, I was wrong. We need to take these five divisions. We need to bring them over here and uh, deal with a problem in Alabama. Okay, come down here and try to take their port. If anything, it's just going to be distracting the United States, them going for that. Korean uprising, and oh, it looks like they left a mountain area open for me. I'll take those for free whenever you want to give them to me, for sure. Okay, so we need you to come down here if you can. Just fill these areas up. You come out here to Salt Lake City. Now, can we go west to Los Angeles? See, I'm not seeing these 70 something divisions the United States is going to have, so I'm wondering if they're trapped trying to go all the way to South America right now to get back to the West Coast. Wow, it's only been 42 days of warfare. Time flies when you're having fun, huh? Actually, no. The beats, it hasn't been flying. What am I saying? I'm sorry, that was really dumb. Uh, let's work on some infrastructure for a little bit. Just a bit. Okay, we've got a nice encirclement here. Why can't, why aren't you turning? Okay, weirdo. Uh, let's see what the casualties are like so far. I've taken 26,000. The United States has actually taken less casualties than me, but that's fine. Perfectly fine. Just fill in some of these areas, please. Okay, we got St. Louis, which is just great. Yeah, if we could bottle up the combined syndicates, I'd be very happy with that. All right, now you come down here. You cut across. All right, looks good so far. Looks very good. Uh huh. Yeah, we've basically secured Arizona. Let's get some of you going out here. Fresno, there goes Petrograd. All right, so definitely sure they're about to capitulate. Oh, did Finland get involved in the war? Yeah. Yep. Once the Finno-Russian coalition forms, it's it's all over. It's all over, baby blue. Okay, how are things looking over here? Uh, they've abandoned Richmond. It's like, my grandpa's gonna be so happy, we took it back. <laughs> All right. K 
keep pressing north. Keep pressing north. You know, I don't like to fight in the Midwest, but it is necessary sometimes. Okay. This is all looking good. I'm going to keep pushing back here. All right. I just realized I've not assigned any of my um, planes. Oh, I did. Okay. My bad. I did. All right. Uh, <clears throat> so down here in Alabama... Very good, very good. Now let's let's assign some of these command points to people who we want. Combined arms expert, Panzer expert. I think this sort of stuff can wait, except for you, Patton. Uh, you, we are going to make charismatic, right? Yeah. Or then again, the reorganization. No, he's charismatic. He's more charismatic than anything. So let's do that. And we're gonna do the Panzer expert as well. We still are able to give him another trait. It might be Gorilla Fighter, just because entrenchment's really cool to have. Huh, the capital of the United States moved. Did they take back Washington? Oh, I guess they did. Interesting. Uh, can't do a can't do a last stand right here. But it's mostly looking good. We're taking plenty of tiles. Okay, now we see to come take these gaps. You gotta fill these gaps, guys. Pierre. Boy. That Seattle commune is turning into the greater Seattle commune. Alright, United States of America is only about two thirds of the way towards capitulating. Maybe they will, even if just Washington falls. We'll just have to wait and see, I guess. Oh. Huh. They got seven divisions that got trapped here. Didn't even notice. All right, we're continuing to make our way through Illinois. They don't seem to be paying attention. Like, or I think they're just too stretched out, the uh, the uh, the CSA. And we're going to get over the river here. Oh, yes. Goodness gracious, yes. All right, I think we can, think we can get up to the Dakotas now. Uh, we did get somebody to get cut off, though. All right, we got, uh, we got something here. Appeal to reason. Charles Lindbergh has arranged a meeting between Huey Long and a number of leading industrialists, including Henry Ford, Fred Koch, and H.L. Hunt. These men are inclined to close their factories and refineries within the South to comply with orders from the federal government. However, they are instead persuaded by Lindbergh to, pick, to stick up for Huey Long and move their business empires into the American Union state on a few conditions. They ask that Huey Long guarantees some sort of political exception to them in this dire economic times, as well as a promise of political office once the war is won. If Long agrees to their demands, it will give them greater influence, and many of his supporters will wonder if he plans on betraying his ideals. However, refusing in such a time may prove costly. We could agree to their reasoning, which will lower the popularity of the authoritarian Democrats, or we could refuse their reasoning, which is going to give me a lack of the industrial support, which will lower my production efficiency growth and construction speed for 1,095 days. Well, we are going to refuse that. Huey Long, don't play that. His resolve has never been stronger, haven't you heard? Somebody better tell him. All right, so we're getting into we're getting nicely into Nevada here, and we're still short on rubber. That's the one thing that you can't find in the United States, but we've got access to a lot of resources now. We got all this oil. In fact, if we looked over here, oh, actually, we're only getting five um, factories from trade. I was expecting much more than that, considering all the oil I've got my hands on. Okay, yeah, we're, we're about to relieve this guy. Let's come over here, take out that little blue spot. Second International, we've taken it. You know what? We're just going to tell this Matthew Ridgeway's people to just run up the coast. Oh, we just lost some political power there because uh, of Hemingway giving his nonsense speeches or something. I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention. All right, Chilean Argentinian war is happening. Now we got to keep an eye out on Mexico because they may intervene. I've not seen them do it yet, but just does. But just because they haven't doesn't mean they won't. You know what I mean? Okay, let's uh, let's come over here somewhere for now, and yeah, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta get ready to shorten this line. We're getting way too stretched out. Speaking of, you see, this is what I'm talking about. Stretched out. Now I'm getting divisions cut off. I don't need that in my life. Can we try this, maybe? 
And you guys come down here. This is one of my crucial infantry divisions, so I really don't want to lose those. Uh, can we get one of you into Louisville? Possibly. See, they're trying to trick me. They're trying to bait me to go for Chicago. That's fine. I'm a patient man. And I actually think I am not going to go up to the Dakotas. Because uh, even though it's a small border and it doesn't seem like they're fighting over it too much, I don't want them to... Uh, if, if you know the United States and the CSA could still attack each other, I want them to. Alright. Let's keep heading north here. We can get a cut off there. Cut off here, cut off there. Here, cut, there, cut, everywhere, cut, cut. So, let's do this. Let's uh, extend these guys a little bit. Ooh, not too much. But we definitely have to shorten Hodge's group. Yeah, they're way, way too stretched. Everybody's stretched. It's gonna get better. I just gotta, just gotta close some of these, these holes or fix these salients. Come on, Ridgeways people, you gotta move a little faster for me. Okay, we got a nice little salient here. Can we maybe pinch off them here? Create an uh, create a Lincoln pocket. Get over the river. Nope, stop it. Okay. That's working. Keeping this guy pinned down. I'm going to take Denver. And, yep, that's what I was afraid of. This guy got cut off. How are we doing on infantry equipment? Not so good. Okay, at least we can shorten it over here, it looks like. Good. Good. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna take this militia unit and oh no, this one can't change templates. I was about to say that uh, we're gonna have him um, turn into a cavalry unit so we could just run up the coast, but it doesn't look like they're letting us do that. All right, so I want you to fill in this pocket. You're almost down to the tile you need to be at. We're really running short on infantry equipment, though. Come on, come over here. Spanish Civil War is breaking out. All sorts of civil wars in this campaign. They just don't end, do they? All right. Now, where's the five of you? You guys are here. Um, we need you... Okay, what are we going to do? We're going to delete these orders. We need you to focus on this pocket. Finally, we can get the expanded National Guard stuff, or should we actually we should get the firearms manufacturers so we can be building guns a little bit quicker. And Hodges is sick now. That's just what I needed, isn't it? Start heading for Seattle. Now, how are we doing on factories? We've got 72. They've got possibly 70 as well. Not 72, though. I don't like that salient. Let's try to shorten it up. It's all about line management. Okay, get them up here. Yeah, we lost, what, two divisions up there? Damn. Just got too greedy. Okay, come on. Guys, gotta move faster. See, we've almost, once we're up the coast, it's really going to be easy. Well, because first off, the United States will probably be capitulated, but I'm actually totally fine with if they just stay in Washington. But if we can get up to California, then we can start wrapping it up and uh, heading east. Although, yeah, we are starting to deal with resistance to occupation, which is annoying. Damn it, you know what the hell with the rubber? How's the, how's the tanks going? We're not building any. Really? What the heck is taking so long? Why aren't we building... Oh, because we got this guy. Uh, okay, so how much longer is this going to take? He's still a little short. That's... That's going to be the fun one. Okay, let's get you here. Oh, 
Okay. This is looking good right now. Um, we're going to have you pivot and then keep going north. And you don't engage when you don't have to. I wish, I wish they would just fill in this little area here, though. It's making things kind of ugly. Alright, what can we do for you? Infantry expert. Yes, indeed. Although, really, should I have gotten that? Maybe I actually should have gotten the... You know what? That was a mistake. I should have gotten the entrencher, because this guy's a panzer man. Okay, I, I'll try not to make that mistake again. I know the entrenchment's a little weird thing to think about when it comes to tanks, but... Why not? Okay. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Hmm. I don't think we're going to be able to save those guys. Hmm. Portugal and Africa are at war. I'm actually extremely curious how that one's going to see how that one turns out. I'm rooting for Middle Africa. Are we going to be able to that? No, I think we are not going to be able to get the capitulation of the United States, but it's okay. Um. Okay, we got to delete this order. This thing is becoming a total mess. Something like this is much better. See, we just got to get up to Washington, and then the line automatically is going to get shorter, and then we'll push through along the, the Midwest. We'll be just fine. Yeah, keep heading north. Keep heading north. We've got access to all sorts of resources now. Look at all that oil, aluminum, steel, tungsten. It's wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. Yikes, when did those guys get encircled? Yes, yeah, so Hodge's units are definitely suffering out here. It's okay. Actually, we, yeah, we can we can save these guys. Yeah, we can link all this up because we got, we got like eight divisions that have been cut off here. We can save them. We need, why does it say we do not? Oh, he's sick, right? He's sick. How much longer? One more day. All right, we're about to do the force attack and link everybody up here. Do I have to exit and then come back in? Oh, I have to wait till midnight. Or no, unit is sick or wounded. Trait will, okay. There, he's better now. So, what is the deal? What's going on? Why, why can't I use his force attack? There it is, force attack, Jesus. Why was that so hard? All right, we can modify the government, get a minister, but I won't. Uh, it's not important right now. Uh, this is all looking really good. Let's get a couple of our militia units, though, and assign them here just to bottle them up. Okay, so I think that's a good place to stop it for right now. Now the south, spread, uh, it goes from sea to shining sea sea to shining sea and in the next episode um i actually hope the united states doesn't capitulate i want them to stay here in washington so that volunteers can keep hanging out there and then we are going to try to touch the canadian border in the west and then begin making our way east we're holding reasonably well actually very well over here in the uh, kind of tennessee kentucky virginia area and uh, yeah we'll, we'll just begin marching east I feel pretty good about my advantage in factories. They do have more manpower, but remember their organization and planning speed is worse. So uh, we've got we we've each got our advantages and disadvantages. And then uh, I'm gonna probably take expanding the National Guard next, so I could uh, get that get those bon get some bonuses of my own. But I mostly want to clear the United States out of the western half of the nation, and then just. Yeah, whenever I get a chance, go for Washington, but I actually want to keep it alive for right now, deliberately. So thanks for joining me on Conquering History Games. I will see you all in the next one. I hope you're enjoying, and uh, yeah, you all have yourselves a great day. Bye.